I said, multitasking is not not one of my uh, strong suits. So it is what it is, as they say. So planar transformations. The planar transformation is a function that transforms a given um, or a region in one plane into a region into another by a change of variables. Right. So oh, the mouse connect. So I got that. All right. That's one problem solved. All right. I can only handle one thing at a time, clearly. All right. So what we're looking to do is determine the new bounded region by applying the transformation. All right. So um, you're given a rule, and that rule allows you to convert from one set of coordinates to another. So what we're going to do is, well, first, let me get rid of this Desmos business because it's not relevant at least not directly relevant. It's all relevant, you know, and it's all relative, but it's, um, it doesn't tie in with today's lesson. So uh, given the transformation T of XY equals U squared minus V squared comma UV, find the image of the triangle in the UV plane with vertices 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. All right, so let me start off with a diagram here. Make um, make our lives a little easier. Because we're given vertices, but we're not given a function to transform. And we eventually have to get to a point where we can actually do that. So we'll start with the vertices. We have 0, 0, 0, 1. I'll put the 1 here. So we get another point there. And then we have 1, 0. So we'd have another point here. All right, so it's it's kind of weird in the phrasing of it. Find the image of the triangle in the UV plane with vertices zero, zero, blah, 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 right? So the intent for this question is to say that we have some, you can actually go either way. You can say you have some coordinate X, Y, in, and you want to convert that into the UV coordinates, or it could be the other way. All right. Oh, one, one. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, I got the one. I just neglected the part where I, you know, plotted it correctly. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we have this relationship that tells us that if we have some coordinate x, y, that we could find the corresponding values u that are in terms of u and v. Right. But it also can be thought of the other way, where u and v serve as the independent variables, and the resulting function is going to be in x, y coordinates, a function of x, y. Right? And that's what really what we're looking at here. It's find the image of the triangle that's in, that is in the uv plane with these vertices. Right? So this is, if it's the uv plane, we assume that the first variable is the horizontal axis and the second variable is the vertical axis. Right? So if I said the xy plane, it would be horizontal x, vertical y. Right? It actually wouldn't really make a heck of a difference as long as you kept your variables consistent with one another. Now we're looking at a triangle here with these vertices. All right, so that's our triangle, still not the equation of a function. In fact, we're not going to be able to get a single function that's going to go through all these points and still form a, a, a geometric figure, specifically a triangle. But what we can do is extend this and write the equation of that line. Let me just move this one over a little bit. I'll just kind of tuck it up there. We got this horizontal line, and then I might as well just leave that one right where it is, kind of make it a dash, and then just put another one here somewhere. I'm going to put it there. All right. These we can write the equation of. All right. Normally, that diagonal line would be the line y equals x. All right. Well, we're v's and u's here. So this is the line v equals u. 
right? This horizontal line has a V value of one, so V equals one. This vertical line would have a U value of one, right? But they don't, oh, actually, sorry, I put the dashed line in the, the wrong place. Uh, well, which dashed line are you talking about? Uh, the one that matters, I guess, the, this one. That doesn't bound the, the, the whatchamacallit, the, um, the triangle. I'm gonna change the color a little bit, make it pop, make it stand out a smidge color. I was so concerned with making the picture look nice that I uh, forgot about things, you know, like making it look correct. So it's actually bounded by U equals zero. Because right, we've actually captured the triangle with the diagonal, the horizontal. We just have to capture it on the left-hand side. Now, we, we're not going to be using these entire equations. We're just only going to use uh, fractions of them, segments of them. Right? And so what I would say here is that the functions or the equations that make up this bounded region would be, yeah, V equals U but only on the interval of zero to one. Right, my square bracket looks terrible. Huh, not good anyway. All right, only on the interval of zero to one. If, if we're talking about in terms of you, then we are, because we're, we're gonna domain the independent variable. Now, in the case of u and v uh, being equal to zero and one respectively, it, it'll be a little weird, but we're gonna say u equals zero, but only on the interval of zero to one. All right, now that zero to one applies to only the y value, I'm sorry, the v values, v value, sounds weird. All right. And in fact, if you wanna get even more specific so you don't get your wires crossed, you could say U belongs to the set of zero to one. And you could say V belongs to the set of zero to one. All right. Uh, you could also, we also would need to address the, the V equals one. All right. That would be when U is spanning from zero to one also. All right, so these are all the little bits and pieces that come into play, okay? So now I wanna do my conversions, but we, we have to be careful about how we go about doing it, all right? So the first thing that I would be looking at is, and actually, I don't know why I spaced this out quite the way I did. I can just kind of stack them. We have our T of X, Y. is equal to this relationship of u squared minus v squared comma uv. And that's uh, written as an ordered pair, all right? Sometimes it's written in vector form, so I just needed to double check to make sure, all right? So the first thing I would do is I would start off with my v equals one, uh, v equals one, v equals u. All right, so I'll take this one and perform a substitution. All right, bearing in mind that we have some numbers that we can work with, all right? We know that the V values and the U values are zero and zeros and ones respectively. And Really, if it's going to create a triangular region, it's going to account for everything that exists on, on the interval all the way through. All right. So I can make my substitution, in which case I would be looking at T of XY is equal to, so I'm going to replace, let me make this bright yellow. I'm going to replace my V 
with a U in both instances. So we'd be looking at U squared minus U squared, comma, U times U. All right. So zero, comma, U squared. All right, so that's the relation that we would get with that substitution, All right? Knowing that we're only concerned with the parts of this u squared minus v squared uv, where b and u are equivalent to one another, All right? So that, that looks parabolic, All right? But really in, in the whole grand scheme of things here, we're, we're actually gonna end up with something that can be parameterized, All right? So if we wanted to, we could let u equal t and just you know go with parametrics to to define this relationship in the x y plane, All right? But we do have that domain for u to account for, All right? So that domain is going from zero to one, All right? So we'd have to account for that, knowing that it's parabolic in nature, All right? So uh, the u value specifically. So we know that from this, we have the relation where X corresponds to zero, but Y corresponds to U squared. So I can look at this and say, well, X is gonna be zero, that's a vertical line. And I could say Y is equal to U squared over the interval of zero to one. So you can make like a little mini table of values if you want, or you could just kind of know that that's going to correspond to two particular values, zero and one, and then you know any other values. I mean, you get some fractional values in the interim to do that too, right? But this is going to give us some ordered pairs of x and y corresponding. If it lines up the way I want it to, since the x value is constant, it's going to be zero comma, whatever you get when you plug in a zero to this expression, so zero, zero. And it's gonna be zero, comma, whatever you get when you plug this into this expression, which is gonna be one. But adhering to the idea that it's gonna be parabolic in nature, all right? So all that for a drop of blood. Uh, yeah, so that's the first equation and we can start plotting it. So it's just a question of where you want to put your plot. I, I don't really have a good answer for that, except to say, I'm probably just going to tuck it in right here. Okay, because it's only going from zero to one, so it's not going to be too terrible. Relatively vertical horizontal. And okay, so X, Y, zero, zero, And zero one. So we have a couple of points to work off, right? So we could look at it that way. Now, we could also, <clears throat> sorry, frog in the throat again. We could also start looking at the other points, right? So, we did our substitution, we plugged in the B, uh, the U for the B. We could also go the other way and plug in a B for the, the U's, but it's just gonna give us another parabolic relationship over the same interval, which is gonna correspond to the same X and Y values. So we're not, we're not really concerned with that, right? Um, but if I plug in a U equals zero, right? So we can try that. So U equals zero, I'm gonna, Try to strategically copy paste here. I don't think there's any way to do it without the highlighting. Well, at least it's still on the page. So u equals zero and v belongs to the set of zero to one.
actually went a little quicker than I thought it would. So we would be saying T of X, Y would be equal to, if I replace the U with a zero, a little yellow highlight there, I'm gonna get negative V squared comma zero. And that's spanning the interval of zero to one, all right? So same idea, same sort of quadratic relation. It's just a matter of, again, substituting. So we know that the Y value is now gonna be constant and the X, the quote unquote X value is gonna depend on whatever the B value is. So X is gonna be equal to negative V squared over the interval of zero to one. And Y is gonna be equal to zero. So same idea with the substitution, zero in for B, we get X equals zero. We hit Y equals zero. So X, Y corresponds to zero, zero. All right, so it's like we already got that point. So nothing new there. All right, but then you plug in the one, Plug in a one for zero uh, for for uh, words uh, v. You're going to get a negative one, so negative one comma zero. All right. So if it can be sketched in a parabolic sense, we should do that, or we have to do that. The issue is with uh, with the first graph with the u squared going from zero zero to zero one. There was there was no way for us to graph that in the form of a quadratic and still um, connect those two points. It, 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 that's not how quadratics work. So it must have been, um, even though it's a, a power of two relationship, it must have been something that was a straight line connection. Right? But here, I need to connect a negative one zero, that's this guy, over that interval, it's just a question of where we're connecting it. So you look at it and say zero, zero to negative one, zero. So I got a point here and a point here. All right, so we have connections, connections, which is good. And then we have that last little piece that we need to worry about, which is the V equals one. So again, same idea. So I just got to do some fancy editing or replace. So this is V equals one. U is going from zero to one. So our substitution is going in for V. So I just got to move my highlight. So I make my substitutions. We say that T, I don't want that to be poipal, T of X, Y would be equal to U squared minus one, comma U. All right, so we're saying that X is equal to U squared minus one. We're saying Y is equal to U. The restriction being that u is going from zero to one. All right, so we're going to plug in u's for each, uh, u of zero for each part. So that's going to give us x y corresponding to. If I plug in a zero, I'm going to get a negative one and a zero. Right, we already have that point. That's good. I mean, it's going to connect. That's something. Right. But it's on the negative side now. So you already know it's different based on the change of uh, change of coordinates. Right. But now when I plug in the one, and if you want, like I said, you could plug in values along the way too. But if you get a sense of what the shape is without doing that, then, then you're fine also. Right. So I'm going to plug in a one now. If I plug in a one to each part, I get coordinates zero, one. 
All right. So the question is, because I see a lot of quadratics here, getting from two horizontal points from one to the other, straight line makes sense. Two vertically organized points getting from one to another, a straight line makes sense. But in terms of something like, like this, where you know neither part is constant, that, that, that might be a little bit of a different story. Especially since we know that X was going, it was constant the whole way through. You know, if X has to stay zero over the interval, the the U interval of zero to one, then it couldn't leave the Y axis even if we wanted it to. Same idea for this one. If Y is equal to zero, this couldn't leave the X axis even if we wanted it to. But this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a straight line movement from negative one zero to zero one forming a triangle. So what we do is we grab another point on the way from negative one to, I'm sorry, from zero to one, like a half and plug that in. So you could do it in Desmos if you want. It's really up to you, but you could even just do it in your head. You pop in a half for you, okay? So that's gonna be a quarter minus one is negative three quarters. Right. comma, and again, we're plugging in a one half, negative three quarters, comma, one half, All right? It gives you kind of a sense of what's going on based off of that relationship. But you could also, if you want, you could just graph the, the parametric equation, assuming that you have uh, T as your parameter, you have X equals U squared minus one, you have y equals u, you could just say, if you really want to get a sense, why is this glitching on me? Who knows? I don't know. Nobody knows. We could say, instead of u, we could say t squared minus one comma t. And you can see based off of that, without having to plot a whole ton of points, you could see that that's looking very parametric. All right. So, you know, along the way, you can try to, you know, plot some points like zero, one. All right. That one checks out. That's on the curve. Negative one, zero. That one checks out. It's on the curve. The one that I just made up on the fly, negative three quarters, comma, one half, also on the curve. So it's following that parabolic path but it's giving us this idea that it is parabolic in nature, right? Just experience from parametrics is what kind of led us to that, right? So all that means is when I'm plotting this, I'm gonna go something like that rather than something like that, all right? So it just gives us that extra little bit of uh, wiggle to give us the coordinates in the new space, all right? So we started off with something that was in what we call the UV plane, but really it's just saying it's a two-dimensional plane that's not necessarily X, Y, right? But what we're also doing, and it's really important to realize, is we're transforming the basis for that plane. So the rules of the game are now different. Instead of it being X, Y is X, Y, I'm gonna bring this in a little bit so it's People are looking at it, right? So instead of an X Y value being an X Y value at face value, you know what what does a, you know an X value of one mean? It means one step along the X axis. What I'm saying here is that one step along the X axis corresponds, or or, or, or one step in a particular coordinate system, doesn't have to be the x-axis, corresponds to a step of u squared minus one in another coordinate system, right? So now it's creating a really a different reality based off of those points, right? So what's the purpose? You know, that's a good question. Well, if you remember multiple integrals, you might remember that it, it was pretty easy if you were dealing with rectangular 
base areas when you're trying to find the volume over a particular uh, base area. It was pretty, pretty not bad when you needed to do it over something that was confined to a, a rectangular or triangular base region. Right? So what this is telling me is that whatever these vertices were in that UV plane, they're more, call it, um, suitable or even preferable than, I'm gonna go with suitable. I'm gonna go, gonna go with suitable and suitable will be the word of the day. Uh, it'll be more suitable to work with multiple integrals in those coordinates. It's kind of like when you think about U substitution, you were defining a new variable U for the sake of convenience. You're actually doing this. It just it didn't it didn't seem like it at the time because it just seemed like you was some sort of placeholder. But what you were doing was you were transforming your x function, your function that was in terms of x into a function that's in terms of u, so that you would no longer be in the x y plane. You would be in the u u y plane most likely. All right. So just a quick example of that. I'll just do it off on the side before I go to the next one. It's actually cool when it all comes back to you like this, you start realizing, oh, this is what we we're doing the whole time, the whole time. So if you had something like the integral of, uh, I don't know, I'll just keep it simple. Um, like really simple, not too simple. I'll just say the integral of 2x times the sine of x squared dx, all right? So you would be saying that f of x, so f of x would be equal to 2x sine x squared, and you wouldn't need the dx at that point, all right? That, that's what you're saying. You're saying the integrand is that function of x, and you're looking to find a bounded area, all right? But then what you would do is you would define a u. So you'd let u equal x squared. Then you would differentiate. You'd get du is equal to 2x dx. You'd make your substitutions. u goes in for the x squared. The 2x dx gets replaced with the du. And now you have a much more simple integral sine of u du, right? So what that tells us is that in the xy coordinate system, I'm gonna plot it, f of x is equal to two x times the sine of x squared. All right, this is that function in the xy coordinate system. All right. So what you do is you kind of like imagine a TV show or even the end of Wayne's world where you do it. You know, and so you, you transform the coordinate system instead of being an xy that you see here, you have f of u is equal to sine of u. Right, so this transforms, and, and it's not gonna let me do it because it's, it's defined in terms of X and Y, so I'll write it as F of X. In the UY coordinate system, this is what it would transform to, all right? And so what's actually happening is you're not really transforming the function you're stretching and shrinking and skewing and slanting and all that good stuff, the x, y coordinates in terms of the axis value. So if you stretch out the x axis to make, let's say each x tick mark twice as long or half as long or whatever, if you, you squish and smush and stretch one part and squish another part, eventually you could mold the x, y plane into the x u, uh, I'm sorry, the, the u y plane 
And this graph would eventually transform into this one. Right. So you were doing that all along, except now we're formally addressing it because in the past it was kind of a luxury where converting coordinates, it sounded like, oh, okay, it's a nice nifty shortcut for integration. Now it's an absolute necessity because you get to some situations where you just can't conceptualize in one plane, but it's much easier to conceptualize it in another, right? All the rules of transformations getting from polar to rectangular and you know any other you know arbitrary system like we're going to be looking at here, they're all based in this idea. All right. So the second example here tells us that we have xy coordinates that are given as or in the form of x squared plus y squared over 36 is equal to one. All right. So if you plot that, always a good idea to plot it, or at least have a sense of what the plot looks like. I could do it by hand, but you could also do it on Desmos just as easy, I guess. Uh, this one's centered around zero, so it's not too bad to do by hand. It's got a vertical change of uh, six. Whatever. Why is that moving on this one? Don't know. And so what? Okay, stop moving. Oh, that's why. I didn't put the pen on. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one out in either direction here because right, of the assumed denominator of one. All right. So I got two vertices on the horizontal axis, two vertices on the vertical axis. And there's my ellipse. All right. I got to say, I, I probably wouldn't have been able to do this as a student. You know, I did, conic sections when I was in pre calc as a student didn't seem overly important to me until you get the calculus, you realize, oh, it's actually kind of important. But then, you know, technology happens and you, you kind of uh, you, you lose some of the rules, but it's good to know. So let me just pop this in real quick. So you'd have it this way anyway. So, you know, it's not the end of the world if you can't do it by hand, but it's, it's like I said, it's nice to know. So what we want to do is we want to transform this into U coordinates, right? So we're already given a function that's in the xy plane. This way is going the other way. It's much easier. Right? If you're, if we were given the relation t of xy, and then we were given coordinates that were represented in terms of u and v, it, that's that's a little bit of a trickier situation. Right? But when they define it in terms of x and y, it's a lot easier. Right? Because we we can do pretty much what we did way back in the uh, in the first unit. We know we that we can think of this parametrically as x being u over two and y equaling three v. Right. So this is the same as saying, all right, by direct substitution, instead of x squared plus y squared over thirty six is equal to one, I would say u over two squared. plus 3v squared over 36 is equal to one, all right? So by substitution, we can, we can simplify this into something that would be a little bit friendlier, I guess, all right? We, we're still restricted to the domain, but if, we, if it's a recognizable function, then we'll have something that we could work off. Right, but that being said, we already have something that's defined parametrically in terms of the transformation. So if we needed to actually define this in terms of even a vector value function, the u's and the v's are gonna be a pretty good place to start, right? And part of the challenge here is gonna be determining what this relation is because this is actually the simplest form out of everything that we're gonna have here. So we're looking at u squared over four plus nine v squared 
over 36 is equal to one, if you simplify, uh, we would probably want to clear out all the denominators if possible. So I would multiply everything by 36, I guess, but I could also divide the nine into the 36 and get a four here, in which case I would multiply everything by four. And something, I don't, I don't want to call it surprising. I don't want to be dramatic. But something kind of cool happens. You end up with u squared plus v squared is equal to 4. All right, u squared plus v squared is equal to 4. All right, that's the equation of a circle. So what that's telling us is in the UV plane. So in this brand new plane, that looks good. In this brand new UV plane, we have a circle with a radius of two centered at zero. Uh, that looks very elliptical. There we go. All right. So you look at that and say, okay, six of one, half a dozen of the other. That, that, that's not really doing anything for me. And I'd say, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Time out. Because once you realize that it's actually the equation of a circle centered at zero, zero, you could actually convert this over into polar form. And call it R equals two in the UV plane. All right, because we don't have a rule that says anything other than X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared, but that's only because it's in the XY plane. If it's in the UV plane, then it would be U squared plus V squared is equal to R squared. So we could actually take it a step further and say, this converts not only from what you see, you know, x squared plus y squared over 36 equals one. Based off of that transformation, it'll get us into a very simple polar equation. The only thing that you'd have to remember is the same thing you had to remember with u substitution. Once you make the substitution from x's and y's to u's and v's, you got to do it for every x and y. All right. So if you have bounds of integration, those bounds need to be converted over also. Right. So that's that's something to keep in mind. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a star on the next two because uh, the next one's kind of along the same lines, a little bit easier probably. And then the number four is kind of an extension of uh, this whole concept. It's kind of cool, but uh, that that's where I'm going to leave it for that. I don't want to I don't want to rob you of the the joy that you'll experience by uh, especially tackling number four. All right, so let me stop this recording. Uh